So I'm going to list several different things and you're going to try to tell me what or what you think these things might have in common. So we have conquistadors like Hernan Cortez, Jesuit priest, Lucille Ball, the Eagles, John Wayne and Sammy Hagar. So what might they have in common? Wendy, Carol Beth, any, any idea? Millennials don't know what they are. No, oh, they, they, that's a good one. That's actually a good one. <laughs> oh, that but, was a good one. But obviously the title of this episode is going to give you an idea. Is They all are integral to the history, the culture, and the popularity of the Los Cabos region of Mexico. From conquistadors to missionary and old Hollywood, then back to rock legends, they have all helped cement. Cabo is not only a popular tourist destination, but a place rich in history and culture. Okay, I'm going to ask the obvious question. What is Cabo? So Cabo, you when you hear the word Cabo, you obviously you think of Mexico, but a lot of people don't realize it's not a town. It's an entire region. And the more technical term would be Los Cabos because there are multiple. There are multiple little towns in the region. And so a Cabo in Spanish is it's actually Spanish for Cape. And geographically, a Cape is a high point of land where two bodies of water they meet and it extends out into those bodies of water. So what's really interesting about the Cabo region is you have two totally different types of currents, one from the Pacific Ocean and one from the, um, the Sea of Cortez, and they meet right there. And you have currents going in opposite directions. You have those shallow waters off the coast of the Baja California that really, really stir up a whole lot of undertoes and things like that, which make it a little bit of a dangerous area. So mm -hmm. you hear sometimes there's not a lot of swim swimmable beaches there, but this is why. These are some really powerful currents. But it's interesting to note that not only do you not swim in a lot of places, this is a huge tourist destination. You wouldn't think those two could go together. But um, I've always heard of Cabo as a party place. So um, I, I don't yeah, think that I've ever that. learned anything different. I certainly didn't. Like, do you visit? Is, is there like a meetup with Sammy Hagar? Do you have a Lucille Ball <laughs> dinner? Thanks. You would think so. But I'm going to tell you why they're important in a little bit. It's really, it's, it's so, it's... I, when I was there, it was so fascinating to take a tour by a local and to learn these these little tidbits. So I was so fascinated. That's why I wanted to talk about it. But um, there are two actual areas when you're talking the Los Cabos region that you kind of separate into kind of towns. You have Cabo San Lucas, and that's kind of the one you think of most. But there's also San Jose del Cabo. And together, mm -hmm. they are the Los Cabos, the Capes. And the very, very southern tip of this area is the iconic geographical feature, El Arco, which is the arch. You can kind of, I'm sure you can picture the arch in your head. That is the very it's southern so tip. so beautiful. Of it. it is, it is beautiful. And the, the, the tours you can take to go see it. Obviously, you're not swimming out there or anything, but, but right. it is, it is really a fascinating area. Yeah. We went out, uh, we went to Cabo a few years ago mm -hmm. and our resort faced the arch and it was just yes. this beautiful picturesque scenery it was lovely which was and then we did take a, a boat tour out there you know so that yeah. we could get closer to it and then we went over to an area that we could snorkel so that was a lot of fun yeah there are a few places like that were you near madano beach i really don't remember cuz it's been <laughs> A few years, years so right yeah but i do remember that at our resort there was this man and he was walking out you know just walking along the beach and he walked out too far and that undercurrent and he was an mm -hmm. older gentleman that undercurrent grabbed him just in the shallow part and people were running to go and and get him because he was having a hard time standing back up it was it was kind of scary it it's could, scary. It, it, it's fascinating that geography can make such a cool place because you've got desert on one side, mm -hmm. you've got these beautiful waves and you think, let me just go walk out into them. But it is, it's, it could be a dangerous situation there. The swimmable beaches are very, very well marked and the non-swimmable beaches are very, very well marked. So you can definitely tell the difference between the two. 
Okay, well, well now I'm curious. about the history. Yeah. I was going to oh, say, are okay. we ready to move on to that? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Short okay. segments. I'm telling you, we're going to go through. That's okay. Okay. So, Sandy, why, what about this town is so historical and makes it this big tourist destination? So, the, this region has been settled for thousands of years by natives. Um, you can even go and actually take some tours and you'll see some of the cave paintings that are still in existence in some areas. Oh, wow. But the real mm. history starts when Hernan Cortez attempted to colonize the area. But due to his inability to grow crop, crops and these fights and conflict with the, the local natives, he failed. <laughs> so that's, I, I was fascinated. You hear Sea of Cortez, it's named after him, right? And he comes in 1535, mm -hmm. and he fails to colonize the area. So it's it's fascinating that they still <laughs> named, right? He failed. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> so fast forward. So that's that's really short and sweet, right? But fast forward about 150 years, and then you have lots and lots of Jesuit and Catholic missionaries and missions mm -hmm. coming to the area and popping up and ministering. Lots of these are still there. You can still go and view, view these beautiful architectural just it's it's pieces of art these missions are just beautiful buildings pieces of art you can go in and see these cathedrals and stuff some of them are still in in function some of them are just more of a tourist attraction you can go and see but so now you have the jesuit priests in the area about 150 years later we're in the 1700s at this point so keep going okay. forward and this is where i find it gets really really fascinating so you've got the age of old hollywood glitz and glam and it's just you you can picture you know in the 40s and in the 50s these beautiful dresses they're wearing and all of this fascinating celebrities there is this guy his name is rod rodriguez he is the son of the president and he decides to open a hotel he's friends with all of these people in old hollywood and so he opens this hotel in 1956 it's called the palmia he actually bought the property for $15,000 and it was 400 uh -huh. acres. And so what a great investment, right? This guy is starting yeah. this tourist Mecca. He buys this 400 acres and he starts building. He says, well, these people from America, they've got all this money. They want to <laughs> travel to Mexico. Where are we going to put them? And he decides he's, he's going to find a place to put them. He builds the hotel. It's called the Palmilla and it is still there. It is, it was the very, very first one. So he is, his wife was Lucille, not Lucille Ball quite yet. We're not to her yet, but <laughs> she was a Hollywood actress as well. And all of their friends would flock to the site because he had a private airstrip. So he put in a private airstrip mm -hmm. so that it made it really convenient. And it, this was not known to other people because everybody wants to go and catch a glimpse of a celebrity. So it was quick and easy, and it was private getaways for all of these really, you know, fancy schmancy celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. But other people started to realize, well, this is this is big money, so let's start opening some more hotels. So more hotels opened in 1961. The Hotel Cabo San Lucas, which is kind of iconic for the area, it started out... Um, it was pretty modest at first, but then as tourism, it was limited kind of to a lot of fishing people, people who really loved this great sport fishing. Then celebrities started realizing this is a place we can go. So John Wayne, who was a big fisherman himself, he travels down, Desi Arnaz, Lucille Ball, they're all at this Hotel Del Cabo and Frank Sinatra being Crosby, some more famous names. So look, at this point, obviously these names are getting bigger. The secret's out. And so more and more hotels start being built and more and more people start flocking to the area. And that's when you start the, the era of the all inclusive, because before then it was just hotels, your a la carte. They start catering to these people who just want to come and sit and, and eat, drink and be merry and not have to worry about anything else. So that's when some of these all inclusives start getting built. But I find it fascinating that it started off with this one guy who I'm going to put a private airstrip. I'm going to stick a hotel here. Mm -hmm. And he started it all. I love it. And it started with fishing. I never it would have did. guessed that. 
It started right. as a fishing. It was, it was a, it's a great place. So if you hear, um, is it Marlin is one of the biggest deals. One of the Marlin fishing is huge there. So lots of fishing yeah, when, charters and stuff. When we were there, one of the restaurants, you know how a lot of restaurants along coastal areas have mm -hmm. a, a, a scale so that mm -hmm. people can weigh their fish. Well, someone had gotten a huge Marlin and so it was just hanging there on this scale. It was so <laughs> big. That's really wow. cool to see. That is a lot of these places like, so Wendy, I don't know. Did you notice a lot of these places will do like a catch clean cook kind of meal for you? Yes. If you go mm -hmm. and catch it and bring it back and they'll clean it in front of you and cook it right there on the beach. It's the coolest thing. It is. Yeah. How do they cook it? I've never seen such a thing. So what does it look like? They cook it on the beach. What does that mean? Well, it's it's a restaurant that's just right off the beach, typically. Oh, so they so cook it gonna... in their kitchen. I was mm -hmm. just picturing mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. kind of how the pig gets put under the ground in Hawaii. Like maybe there's well, some be method of cooking the fish on the beach that I didn't know about. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> the smell might prohibit that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'd true. want to, to bury a fish. But no, it's, it's restaurants that kind of partner with some of these charter companies. And we'll do stuff okay. like that. We'll do the, you catch it and we'll clean it and cook it for you. Mm -hmm. There's there's some other places. I know you can do that near Ala Morada in the, the Keys and stuff. But it's it's really cool to, to go get your own gigantic marlin or some sailfin or something and come back and you're sitting on the beach. They have cooked it and you are just enjoying your fish that you caught that day. It's really cool. But, but yeah, in the 90s, a lot of... It also, Cabo became an area where, where rockers would come and they had different places. They would do concerts and stuff. And Sammy Hagar, does anybody know who Sammy Hagar is? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're I not do. millennials. Okay. We know who I'm just Hagar is. I'm just making sure. 50 is my favorite Van Halen album. Just oh, there you go. Well, Wendy. Well, we will, mm -hmm. we'll just I'm more of a pre-Sammy Van Halen person. But, okay. Yeah. Well, so Sammy Hagar of Van Halen fame, he wanted a place for his buddies to go and play. And a lot of these places, they were still very touristy. So have you ever heard of Cabo Wabo? Mm hmm No. So he had a What's song. What's a Cabo Wabo? A <laughs> so first it was a song. <laughs> first it was a song. It was a Van Halen song. It's called Cabo Wabo. It is oh, obviously know. rock. And they <laughs> opened a... <laughs> You were so funny. They opened a, it, it's a bar now. So they opened this bar so that all of their friends could come and rock and play and, and people they knew could come. But it has become more than that now. So this was in 1990. It is downtown Cabo San Lucas. So if you, you know, I told you there was two areas. So if you are in Cabo San Lucas and have you ever, have you ever, pictured in your head the the Los Cabos sign it is kind of downtown it is not far from there and they now make their own tequila there's a Cabo Wabo tequila brand and that is right where I'm sorry I just lost my train of thought I was going to scroll down so I could see more of the script so it's right there where you'll see a lot of the little restaurants and shops. You can drive through. It's a kind of on a main drag, and you can see Cabo Wabo there, which for some people, mm -hmm. Carol Beth is famous. Carol Beth might have Cabo Wabo is famous for <laughs> others. It, it is. Wendy, have you heard of I'm it? I'm so bad. I'm like the, I don't know. Yeah, I've heard of Cabo Wabo. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. good. I don't know. I like I, there's a, whole like, swaths of culture that I'm completely <laughs> absent of. I have no idea what's going on. So Cabo Wabo. Well, Carol Beth obviously is not a rocker, and that's okay. <laughs> but if you want to be, you can head down to Cabo Wabo. <laughs> it is a memory thing as well. I, I, you know, my you say like picturing this sign. I could have been there last month, and I still probably wouldn't be able to picture the sign. So I mean, uh, there's a weird limitation that's built that's in okay. too. Yeah, but um, I feel like I would remember Cabo Wabo, though. I feel now I have to look that up. So I'm positive that is if so it's a song, funny. you're going to hear a snippet of it during this podcast. So I'm sure I'll get oh, to hear it. Be, I didn't even process. think about it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I hope we do. But yes, yeah, so I could imagine some Van Halen in there. But <laughs> so between the history, you've got old Hollywood coming in and now you have the rockers coming in. It is an act. It is a very diverse area. You can find something for everyone there. It is 
an amazing place to visit. I never thought that I would want to go to a beach location where you couldn't really go on most of the beaches. But when I'm there and I'm learning all of these things, it's and and the landscape. Wendy, did you find the landscape mm-hmm. was just fascinating? Because you, it, it it's, is. It's an amazing, yeah, I, beautiful place. Yeah, I think I think the combination of desert and ocean is so interesting. You know, <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. I, th- I thought the same thing. When you when you went, did you see many of the golf courses? No, we did not. We, I mean, we did pass some, but we really didn't see much. Honestly, we didn't have a, I think we only spent three or four days there. It wasn't really long. And so we did go into, you know, we, we took that one tour that took us mm-hmm. out to um, the arch and went snorkeling and we, we went to downtown. Um, and then we just really kind of hung out at the, the resort. Mm-hmm for the rest of the time, but we did take That's pretty the bus, the public bus from downtown to our resort, right. which was an interesting experience. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's how it is with our family. So <laughs> you, that works. Cause I remember, so th- this it's, there's so much culture here that you wouldn't think so, but mm-hmm. something that I found fascinating, did you know that there is a huge glass blowing industry? Oh, I did not. Yes. I love glass blowing. It is I really cool. You can take tours of the factories. And so it is really common. So all of the, there, most of the resorts are glass free, but you have a lot of people that make their money by just walking down the beach and picking up any kind of beach glass they can find and selling them to these glass blowing factories. It's a big deal. Oh. So we, when I was oh. there, we toured one. We watched a great demonstration, um, and it is, it's, it is it's is—it's so incredibly cool. You can go and watch the glass blowing. They have their little shops right beside it. I brought home a ton of the little stir stick, you know, the, the little drink stir sticks. Not mm-hmm. that I really used mm-hmm. them or anything, but they were so cute with a flamingo on top or a turtle Aww. on top or whatever. It was mm-hmm. really adorable. Had a great time doing that, but Some of the other things that I find, I don't think people realize about Cabo is that it is huge for sport fishing. It's got the wealthiest marlin fishing tournament in the world that happens there. And it is a giant golf mecca, surprisingly. So Jack Nicholas, one of his first golf courses that he designed for resorts was here in Cabo. And he has now designed, I want to say it's five specifically for the Cabo area. So I think... There, there are at least, there's probably pushing two dozen golf courses in Cabo, in the Cabo region itself. And many, many of these resorts actually butt up against it. So it's a great destination for, for golfers, for people who want some culture. Because again, I mentioned there's lots of touring the area for history. There are glass bottom boat tours that Wendy mentioned. Did you get to see the sea lions, Wendy? I feel like I did. Like, it's not coming <laughs> to me right now, but I'm pretty sure I did. Do they have a so gathering like they do in San Francisco? They do, they do yeah. have a gathering. So not <laughs> only do you, they gather at the arch. So if you go out to the arch, you'll see them all sitting around and you can hear them yes. and the waves are crashing. It is one of the coolest things I've ever done. And it's one of those glass bottom boat tours. So you're looking at the bottom and you're seeing the sea life, but then you're also seeing the sea lions. The other cool thing is there is a marina area that is right near downtown and it's Mm -hmm. near Madano beach, which is one of the few really long stretches of swimmable beach. And if you stay in that area, one of the resorts that I stayed at overlooked the marina. And so you're overlooking the marina and certain parts of the day, the sea lions are just, all over the docks. They're walking all over the docks in between the boats. And so it's fascinating to look at these big fancy boats. And then here comes the sea lions just walking around and people are walking around them. And at certain points they would jump off, but people are just dodging sea lions. And I thought that was just <laughs> the cutest thing. It was so cute. Funny. But and as- there, there is an Adam Sandler movie that was filmed in Cabo as well. Oh. That was one thing that I knew before I went was, was it's, it's the movie 
where he he marries he marries the girl, but he meets on their honeymoon. He meets another woman, and and I don't think I know. And his the his the the girl that he marries, like the whole honeymoon, like it's just disastrous. Oh my gosh, what is the name of that movie? It's gonna drive me crazy. I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to find it and let us know. It's it's beautiful. The resort is beautiful, and I actually looked at staying there, but we ended up not. Do you remember which resort that was? Mm -mm. It was in the uh, the San 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 Jose del Cabo. Uh, San Jose, yes, yeah, San Jose area. Mm -hmm. Okay, trying to think. We stayed at one. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants was filmed there. Just so you know. Oh, well, now Mm -hmm. we're learning. I did not look up the girls. Supposedly went, um, well, it doesn't, doesn't say, let's see. Yeah. I'm not sure which one, but one of them does. And it's called, you don't mess with the Zohan. That's the Adam Sandler movie that I've never heard of I am, before. Oh no. Did I say that. Adam Sandler? No. I, did I say Adam Sandler? Cause I should have said Ben Stiller yeah. if I said Adam Sandler. Oh, well, Adam ben Sandler Stiller. also did a movie in, <laughs> in Cabo San Lucas. Uh, but it was about a former Israeli counterterrorist, commando turned hairstylist. So that just yeah. goes oh. right off the tongue. Is, right that there. is not yes, child appropriate at all. Oh, you've seen that one. Okay. Not, if it's Adam Sandler, <laughs> <laughs> I would not assume it was very I've never, appropriate. Never heard of that one. So that's that's not what you would recommend, huh? So it's Ben Stiller. Um, you never know. It's Ben Stiller. Um, y'all are cracking me oh up gosh. right now. I'm just going to let y'all look him up. Kid. Oh, I think that's kid? it. Yes. Yes. It's the heartbreak yes. kid. So yes. it's, wow. You are obscure movie titles for 5,000. Wendy Armstrong. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, Jerry Stiller's in it too. Yes. Yes. That's very, I, who knew? That's just fascinating. Okay. So I we, will can we watch you. that one? Is that safe? Is it not know. safe for work to watch the heartbreak kid? Or is that a safe one, Wendy? <laughs> oh no, that that's a safe way. I mean, it's hilarious. Uh, so that one's really funny. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if this has anything to do with, but Hollywood still has a pretty big presence there. Mm-hmm. Like you, a lot of these tours you take, they will point out whose house is whose. For instance, we saw mm-hmm. houses that were owned by Sylvester Stallone. Um, I know Beyonce goes there periodically. Jennifer Lopez has a house or had a house there that they show. I think Oprah us. does too. Oprah's got a house everywhere. Because we saw her house in the Bahamas, too. So yeah. I think she's just got a house all over the place. That's all right. Because she can. But, uh, yeah, well, if you can. The other thing that we mm-hmm. saw that was pretty neat is if you are staying in the marina area, which is great. I highly recommend the marina area because the view is spectacular. You can see if you look out to one side, you're seeing the arc. And then if you look straight ahead, these beautiful mountain tops and, you know, dotted with these beautiful mansions. But the marina is cool because we, let's see, they pointed out Will Smith has a boat there. You get to see these big fancy yachts and stuff, and you have the party barges coming in. And so they'll mm-hmm. tell you who's, whose boat is whose. But it's walkable distance, some of these resorts, through the marina area to this great little downtown where you have shops and straw markets and all kinds of good goodies for for tourists just to kind of hang out. And that's where you, you picture that Los Cabos sign that I mentioned. That everyone takes mm-hmm. a picture in front of it. Uh, the big bright red with the, the, the Los Cabos on it. The other thing I want to mention is that is Jacques Cousteau has filmed a, a lot of his sea life videos there. It is very, very rich in snorkeling and scuba when you find the right places to do it. But it was Jacques Cousteau, one of his favorite places to to record a lot of his his marine life videos. He did a lot of those in this area as well. So there are so many reasons to visit Cabo. It's kind of hard to to mention them all. But I did want to just really go through the geographical features to mention why you would go and Mm -hmm. not necessarily swim on the beach because so many people want to swim. There are a few resorts that are on swimmable beaches, but many of them are not. And you can travel to something like Madonna, which is public and, and swim there. But they also have a very, very 
booming wedding industry here. Lots of destination mm. weddings in the area. They're, most of these resorts have such beautiful locations for a destination wedding. If you picture the rocks and the waves hitting as you're as you're getting married, this is where you go to do that. It is beautiful. And I was looking at some traditions for how to get married in Mexico and what what are some of these little things that you can incorporate if you're doing something like that. And I thought the lasso tradition was was really fascinating. Have y'all heard of this? Mm -mm. They may do this in some parts of Texas because they have such a, you know, strong Hispanic population. But at the end of the wedding, a lot of places in Mexico, there is a lasso tradition. Well, they would take a lasso and turn it into a figure eight and put it around the bride and groom. And they say some of their vows wrapped up in the infinity symbol in a lasso. And it symbolizes their unity and their coming together. And I thought that was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, How cool would beautiful. it be to get married in Mexico, incorporate some of those cultures and traditions, and you're in this beautiful paradise with your family and friends. I loved reading about that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. I thought it was beautiful. Unique. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that was really, did y'all have any other questions? Because I really just wanted to kind no, of give a great. great overview. Of yeah, this was awesome. Fado. Yes. Yes, I feel it's, we can do the my favorite parts. So I'll kick that off. Yeah. Okay. So I loved learning. I, I really knew nothing about Cabo and you painted a beautiful picture of it in my mind of the geography and the history. And, and now I want to go and see some of these giant fish that I don't know that I want to fish. <laughs> um, it's not really my cup of tea, <laughs> but just because it's, um, if you get uh, motion sick, those that going out on the ocean to fish, man, that's a, that's a moment. So I will mm -hmm. watch other people go out and come back and cheer them on. So that sounds super fun. I love anything that's interactive in that way where you get to interact with the environment. So that sounds amazing. Um, and I, I felt all, equally fascinated with the variety of celebrities that are there. It's always interesting to me when they point out the houses and different things like that. What is it? Cause right. what that says to me is that it, the people who have a lot of money and time and, and little time choose to spend time there. So if you, you know, if you can be Absolutely. there and you get to be there in that location where they've chosen with their precious time and a lot of money to get there, then usually you're going, there's a reason for it, right? So there has mm -hmm. to be a draw that's uh, the, the environment and the, um, the feeling of being part of something different than what you're doing back at home, the food, the sights, the sounds. So I want to go and taste Cabo. We'll just have to put that on our list, ladies. <laughs> Absolutely. We all need to head out there. I, I would love to see. So I remember your snorkel story. This is not a location I think Carol Beth would like to snorkel either. <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, as soon as you talked about the currents, I love, I am such a water person, but those man currents are not, they're not kidding. Mm -mm. No, no, not these. It's, it is, it can I, I be respect. a bit of a dangerous area, but it's to, yeah. to even just stand and watch the waves and hear them. So if you're dreaming of a location that you want to be in your room and hear the waves, because you can go to other beaches where it's easy and safe to swim, you're not going to hear the waves as much. But if you want that from your room, if that's in your mind for your vacation, Cabo is a great place. I remember one resort we were at that the rocks formations just right off the resort were so fascinating and so beautiful you could just sit and watch the waves hit those rocks for hours mm -hmm. and the sea lions but, i mean sea lions are hysterical so that's just a bonus they're, they're adorable, one of the funniest things the noises yes they're so funny there's like it's like watching small children throw each other off the rock and have slap fights. And it's great. <laughs> so if you funny. haven't done it, you got to do it. And the smell and it, is to watch too. them walking down the Marina was hilarious so to me. Like did you just people walking along to their boats and they're dodging sea lions cracked it's me the best. and I was watching it from a hotel. <laughs> just for that. Like yeah. the best. That's great. Just... Yeah. I think Cabo is a great place for, for pool people. Like if you love hanging mm -hmm. out at the pool, but want to see the beach, then mm -hmm. this is the place for you because it's extremely picturesque. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be one of those important things when you're looking to travel to Cabo is if you probably want a really nice pool and 
Make oh, sure yeah. your resort has that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had this that great view too of the arch. If you can find the resort that has the view so of the cool. arch plus a great pool, then you know total winner. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes, ma'am. So we stayed a few while we were there. One of them overlooked the marina. One of them, um, one of my views was a golf course with and it, and to watch the golf courses butt up against those rocks. I'm telling you about right off the drop off. How cool is that as a golf course, a golf destination that you are on one side, there's a desert with mountains. On the other side are these giant, craggy, just dangerous looking rocks almost and a huge drop off with these gigantic waves. Coolest golf location that I can think of. I thought well, this was I, I just found the whole history very fascinating, uh, like the whole old Hollywood and he, mm -hmm. he built a hotel in the airstrip just so that they could come in. Um, that's, mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. I, I love hearing the history of places. And so that, that was really fascinating to me that yes. it was built upon one little airstrip and these celebrities yep. coming for fishing. <laughs> Yeah, one little guy and his Hollywood actress wife who had some friends and they wanted to go hang out. And there you go. And now we have this beautiful tourist destination to enjoy. I love it. Yep. Okay. Well, we from the wrap this travel up. Cast. Oh, wait, are we wrapping? Oh, okay. we, we aren't even doing that anymore. It's so awkward. <laughs> I don't think we, oh, okay. we got to figure it's... out how we're going to, because he comes off at the end. So I think that, I think we're just done, but we're never going to feel like we're done because someone else is signing us off. I so just I don't, don't know, know what to, help to say at the end. That. And I think, okay, so it's funny. I was talking to David was telling us about this, how we start to start to trail. Yes. And we did you, and we start to ramble a little too. bit because we're not yeah. sure where the ending is supposed to, to be. Yes. And, or he even, even a transition. Yeah. We do that. Like he can see it. It's funny that he said how he can tell us that we're getting to that point. Now, I don't yeah. know what to do at this point. I'm okay, so I think that we just need to thank, so like we'll thank the guests, like with the last one we thanked James, so that was okay. good. So in this one, we need to thank Sandy for her time spent to, to teach. So I'll just, I'm gonna thank you. Then I'm gonna get up because my back hurts and I need yes, to change chairs. Yes, go. Yeah, okay. I can walk around. So, okay. Thank you so much, Sandy. I really appreciate it all the time and effort you put into this, painting that picture for us and bringing us along to our in, in imaginative journey to to Cabo San Lucas so thank you you are welcome I hope someone is inspired to travel there because it is wonderful 